Dorshay Marhaba. After the rise of Islamist terrorist activities in the world, especially after Paris attacks, people of other religions are now speaking very low of Islam, especially the atheists are declaring Islam to be a bad religion. And they also speak very low of Prophet Muhammad. Although myself and Messiah Foundation International and its members do not follow Islam and we don't follow any religion at all. But the reason why we don't follow Islam or any other religion is not because we hate them. It's simply because we have embraced spirituality, which is the core of every religion. If somebody speaks very low of a prophet and he passes a defamatory, derogatory remarks about a prophet, I personally dislike it. Not for any religious reasons, but for a reason. And that reason is that not just the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, all the messengers and all the prophets were sent by God. And what comes from God cannot be bad. And I personally believe that all these messengers and all these prophets who have been to this world were of great character. They were at their best. They were as good as any human being can ever be good. So if somebody says Prophet Muhammad was a pedophile, I strongly dislike it and in return what I can say now is that Prophet Muhammad came to this world almost 1400 years ago. Any allegation you will put on Prophet Muhammad will be without any evidence, without any proof. You do not know what kind of a man Prophet Muhammad was, right? So you will be putting any allegation and the allegation cannot be tried. The allegation is completely invalid. So you must have heard it from somewhere whose source of information would be as bad as yours. And then you're spreading the word around without any evidence, without any concrete uh, uh, reason. And against what you heard on the grapevine, against any hearsay 
about Prophet Muhammad, I would prefer to adhere myself to authenticity of God. If God had sent somebody, that somebody must be of a sublime character. You haven't seen Prophet Muhammad, I haven't seen Prophet Muhammad. What you hear about him cannot be verified. And I'm not making any claim. So when I'm not saying anything, there is no question of going into verification. What I'm saying is against your hearsay, I would like to present my belief in God. I believe that Prophet Muhammad, including all other prophets, were sent by God and what comes from God cannot be wrong, cannot be bad. Either it's Prophet Adam, the first one, or Abraham, or Moses, or Jesus, or Isaac, or Ismail, or Jacob, or anybody, David, Judah, Elijah, Anak, any prophet, any messenger, His Holiness, His Divine Grace, Lord Radiyaz Gohar Shahi, has taught us to pay respect to all the prophets and all the messengers, no matter what religion they come from. And not only the prophets and the messengers of God, but also His Holiness Gohar Shahi declares in his book, Deen Ilahi. If some people believe some men to be a friend of God, to be a saint of God, for any reason, maybe they're enjoying spiritual grace granted to them by that person, or may, maybe he has spiritual insight. For whatever reason, if some people believe a man to be a friend of God, however, you are doubtful about this state of this man, Sarkar Gohar Shahi advises us not to talk ill of him, not to talk bad about him. If we dislike him, we should keep our mouths shut. The most we can do is that we should stop visiting that person. We should stop seeing that person. And that is enough from our part to show our dislike to the world that we are not visiting that person. We're not seeing that person. However, just because I dislike him will not change any truth. Whether that person is a saint of God or that person is not saint of God, whether I like it or I dislike it is not going to make any changes. If some people believe in India about a man who is a Hindu by religion and they believe he's a saint of God, then we'll have to tell ourselves maybe God can do anything. God can appoint anybody to be his friend. God cannot be restricted by limitations of any religion. Religion, religions were sent by God. Religions were created by God. No religion is greater than God. Either Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Sanatan Dharma, Hinduism, Sikhism, or any other religion. Religions are means to reach God. If you think Islam is greater than God, then you live in fool's paradise. And if you think Prophet Muhammad is a pedophile and your prophet is very good, you're really, really bad person, and you do not know the truth, you're talking about the same God who sent your prophet, and that God sent Prophet Muhammad too. So in other words, you are suspecting that something bad can come from the same God that you believe in. And I ask all of you not to defile, not to defame, not to Talk bad about any religion, about any prophet, about any apostle, about any messenger, about any saint of God. And how do you know? 
that somebody is a saint of God and somebody is not a saint of God. Neither those whom we believe to be saints of God have any certificate from God that shows, oh yes, he's a verified saint of God. Nor those whom we think are not saint of God, but some people believe them to be saints of, saint of God. We have no criterion given by any religion. If some, if some people believe some man to be a saint of God, maybe, maybe he's a saint of God. Maybe. However, we, the followers of His Holiness Gohar Shahi, His Holiness Gohar Shahi has advised us not to reject anybody of anything. If that person is known to be a saint of God or he claims to be a saint of God and we don't like it, rather than talking bad about him, we have been advised by our Lord to keep our mouth shut and stop seeing or visiting that person. Number two, some people in the West, when they address Messiah Foundation International, they use a word cult. You know, it's a really, really bad thing. I'm really hurt when people say you're a cult. These people, do they know the meaning of cult? Do they know what a cult is? Cult is a group of people who are very extremist, who are so extremist, and not just the fact that they, they are extremists, but they are emotionally, intellectually blind. And they close their eyes, they close their mind, they close their heart, and blindly they follow their leader. If their leader say die, they will commit suicide. If their leader say, if their leader ask them to do anything, they will do that thing. Rational? or irrational. A cult is always a personality cult in which your life is controlled by one man. It's like a spiritual dictatorship, like a political dictatorship where the army takes over the country and democratic values are suspended And nobody has any, any, any right to, to say anything. Nobody, nobody's voice is heard. And that one person who is the chief executive of that army, of that country, that person becomes the dictator. And whatever he says, that thing is implemented in that country. That is a political dictatorship. And a cult is a regime, a group of people in which All individuals who are part of that group are intellectually, emotionally controlled by one man and everybody in that group blindly follow that person. If that person says, do this, they will never even think whether, that whether the thing is good or bad. They will simply do it. They are foolishly obedient to that spiritual dictator. We are not a cult. We are not a cult. We're not a cult. We represent the spiritual doctrine of His Divine Eminence, Lord Rarya's Gohar Shahi. But not, that's not it. We also represent the doctrine of love by Lord Jesus Christ. We also promote the amiable, lovable teachings of Prophet Muhammad. We also appreciate the teachings of Moses. We also talk about 
messenger, the prophet Abraham. Messiah Foundation International is not a personality cult. Our institution of spirituality, our regime of, of knowledge and doctrine of spirituality is not circumambulating around one person. If we were a cult, we would not respect anybody. We would not respect any prophet. We would not respect any messenger. And we would not respect any law. We would become criminals. We would only and blindly follow one personality. But that's not the case. We promote love. Whether the teachings of love come from Gorshahi, or they come from Jesus Christ, or they come from Abraham. It's not a cult. It's not a cult. We don't hate anybody. We don't hate anybody. Some Muslims talk bad about our Lord, Rariyaz Gohar Shahi. And we don't react. All we say is, this is your understanding. If you don't like Gohar Shahi, that's your own understanding. That's all, nothing else. About us, we believe Gohar Shahi is our Lord, our God. And we love him. But we don't force you to love him. We don't force you to believe in him. We're not forcing anybody. Are we? We're not forcing anybody to believe in him. We believe in him. And when we talk about His Holiness Gaur Shahi in front of others, we're simply sharing our belief with them. And we're not implying to say that you also must believe. No, we're not doing that. We're not a cult. Right? We're not giving away our life for any reason. When you reach in your belief to a degree where you're ready to give away your life, that is the beginning of a cult. But we do not discuss giving life or taking life of anybody. We're not talking about life, we're talking about love. We don't ask our followers to give away their life for what? We are giving life to your fake life. We're introducing to you internal and eternal life with the touch of love. When you become so consumed with your belief system that you want to give away life for your belief, this is the point where intolerance reaches its peak. Because you think everybody else is a fool. But we, we respect everybody. You go to a temple and we respect that. You go to a mosque, we respect that. We don't call anybody kafir. We don't. Why? Because we don't follow any religion. Kafir is a religious term. We understand everybody believes in God in their own way. Expression of love can differ. Some people may express their love for God in a temple. Others may do that in a church. And some others may do that in a synagogue. Ultimately, they believe in God. So nobody is kafir in our eyes. All are equal. All are children of God. And God wants to love everybody. God is not restricted by any religion. 
And at the same time, I would like to say to this, this truth to the world, that although we do not practice any religion, we are a spiritualist, we are, we are humanitarian, we love humanity, and we believe in equality among all human beings, And we respect all religions, and we respect all prophets, and we respect all messengers, beginning from Adam, and then Abraham, and then Moses, and then Jesus, and then Prophet Muhammad. We respect them all, but we don't follow any religion, because we have found something uh, uh, greater than any religion had ever granted to, to, the, to the world. We're in the business of divine love. Divine, unconditional love. What we believe is, if you're bad, you're bad. Whether you're a Hindu, or you're a Muslim, or you're a Christian. If you're good, you're good. Whether you're a Christian, or a Hindu, or a Jew, or a Muslim. If you're good or bad, it's not because of your religion. It's because of you. If you're bad, it's not because you're a Muslim. It is because you are bad. I would like Rafaka to comment on this and then Mir Saab. There are some indi individuals who, who worship devil. And they're known as evil cult. They always... put on black outfits and they like different kind of music, metal and rock. Number two, another uh, definition of a cult, a religious group and there are three main points about a cult. <laughs> exclusive, <coughs> exclusive in which all members have the same belief and all members think that we are not just the best, We are the only one who follow the truth and everybody else is wrong. Who are they? Wahhabis. That is a true definition of a cult. Exclusiveness. Everybody else is wrong. Now that this is really bad. But my friends, Wahhabis have introduced a more severe form of a cult. In simple meaning of the phrase, the definition of a cult, a religious cult, is a group of people who believe they are the only ones who know the truth and everybody else is wrong. And that's it. But Wahhabi cult is a cult of death and hatred. They think they are the only ones who know the truth, who follow the truth. And everybody else is not just wrong and infidel. Therefore, therefore, those who are not part of our group <coughs> do not have right to live. They must be killed. And their women must be taken captives. And 
must be made sex slaves and the properties must be forfeit this is what wahhabism is this is point number one, which is exclusive exclusive means every single wahhabi has the same mentality as the same belief right number two, authoritative in wahhabism This is the basic principle of Wahhabism, that all Wahhabis must be totally loyal and obedient to their leader. Once a piece of instruction is passed by their leader, they have to follow it, execute it, And in executing the instruction passed by their leader, they must forget everything else. I can give you an example. In ISIS, in the, in the cult of death and hatred, a father is forced to kill his own son, and he must do it because the instruction has come from the leader. And if he doesn't follow the instruction, then he also is li- liable for the same penalty. So this is a cult. <laughs> and then Number th- three, secretive. Secretive. For example, you know, we have um, evangelical style of uh, uh, Muslim uh, group in Pakistan and in India and Bangladesh, and they're known as Tablighi Jamaat. Before I tell you, Uh, what they do, let me tell you the word evangelical. Evangelical is to do with preaching. Evangelical ka matlab kya hai? Wo firqa jo tabliq karta hai. Christians ke andar agar kisi ke naam ke saath evangelical laga ho, to uska matlab hai ye tabliq hi jamaat hai. Ye tabliq karte hai. Promulgation. Evangelical kis ko kehte hai? Jo tabliq karte hai. سارے کرسچن تبلیغ نہیں کرتے ایونجیلیکل تبلیغ کرتے ہیں اور جہواز وٹنس والے تبلیغ کرتے ہیں بالکل اسی طرح جہواز والے وٹنس تبلیغ کرتے ہیں جس طرح وہ بھی کرتے ہیں گھر گھر جا کے پتا ہے آپ کو یہاں نہیں میں نے پاکستان میں بھی دیکھا کراچی میں جہواز جہواز وٹنس والوں کو گھروں پہ دستک دے دے کے تبلیغی جماعت In the initial stage, they prepare you for a newer form of Islam. A form of Islam which is fundamentally adulterated. A form of Islam in which the basic principles of the religions of the religion are totally adulterated, altered, not just modified, renewed, replaced with the fundamental principles of the religion. For example, you receive revelation of God through a prophet. You receive God's messages through a prophet. Your belief in God is totally dependent upon your love for the Prophet. However, in this newer form of Islam introduced by Wahhabis, you are no more required to show veneration, to show admiration, to show love 
for Prophet Muhammad. As a result of which, you never get connected to God. You're as distant from God as you were before you accepted Islam. In the initial stages, when this Muslim evangelical structure called Tablighi Jamaat works, They change the way you perceive Prophet Muhammad. They change the way you perceive the religion of Islam in which there are different scholars, there are different saints of God. And, you know, um, when you feel that you're not connected to God, you visit them and through them you want your messages to be sent to God. In the initial stage of the Tablighi Jamaat curriculum, the mediumship between men and God, which used to be a messenger or a prophet, and after the, the final prophet came to the world, this mediumship was replaced by a newer spiritual system called sainthood. They removed the mediumship. Either this mediumship is consisting of messengers or, or prophets or a saint of God. So you are actually rather pushed away from God than bringing you closer to God. You are academically and emotionally, intellectually being pushed from God rather than bringing you closer to God. And this is where your entire theological system, your entire system of belief collapses. And you develop new lunatic ideas about religion. You develop new, strange, bizarre concepts about the religion. And you begin to think that only you know the truth. And rest of the people are either infidel or they are not pure. You're the purest one. This is true practical definition of a cult. Let's talk about us. Our Lord, Rariyaz Gohar Shahi, has never drew attention of people towards him. He has always directed people towards God. How can you even think this is a cult? His Holiness Gorshai never ever drew attention of people towards him. He has always made sure that nobody is around him or worshiping him or admiring him, rather, he directed people towards God's love. If Gohar Shahi was in the business of drawing attention of people towards him, in that case, he would never ever ask us to respect Jesus, to respect Abraham, to respect Moses, or even respect a Hindu guru or a saint that we don't even know of, who lives in a remote village of India. That is a bizarre sort of <laughs> allegation. And anybody even thinking of such an allegation should reflect on his own spiritual system. And let me tell you, all such people who have certain ideas about others, like somebody has an idea about us that we are a cult, 
all such peoples are atheist. Atheist. We believe in God. And we believe everybody who believe in God is a good guy. Right? Whether the person believe in God through Sikhism, Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism, or any other religion, that doesn't really matter. What matters is that he believes in God. What is more important is that the fact that he believes in God. He believes in God through Islam or Christianity is of no significance. Because the primary issue is belief in God. And how you believe in God is secondary issue. We believe in God. Now, what about people who don't believe in God? How do we see them? If you don't believe in God, so what? It's none of our concern. We're not concerned. And we're only concerned that we believe in God. And we appreciate when we see others believe in God. Now, if somebody doesn't believe in God, it does not concern us. Did you hear me? We believe in God and we're happy that we believe in God. And when we see others people, when we see other people believe in God, we appreciate that. And if somebody doesn't believe in God, are we offended? No, we're not God. Maybe God is offended. We're not. It's not our business to convince people to believe in God. It's not our business. Right? We're just happy that we believe in God. That's all. And somebody else also believes in God. We appreciate that and we, we really feel good. Oh my gosh, he also believes in God, a good guy. If you don't believe in God, that's none of my business. You can believe in shit, who cares? We're not a cult. <laughs> We mind our own business. We do not want to look at negativity. We only focus on positivity. What it means is that we're only concerned that we believe in God. We want to make sure that throughout our life, we should successfully maintain to believe in God and extend our help and our veneration and admiration for those who share our belief system. And our belief system is not a secretive belief system. Our belief system encompasses all faiths, all religions, and all belief systems. Whether, the, you, whether you believe in God through this religion or that religion, it doesn't really make any difference. What makes difference is that you believe in God eventually. And those who form a cult, those who form a cult, they do not let their members appreciate others. <laughs> those leaders who form a cult, they want to make sure that you don't look at anybody else. If this was a cult, we would not show our veneration to Lord Jesus Christ, to Prophet Muhammad. Although, the current form of Islam is totally abhorrable and we don't like to hear any news from Islam. But at the same time, we extend our respect, veneration and admiration to Prophet Muhammad because we're not a cult. We're not Jews, but we respect Moses and Abraham <coughs> if not more than Jews respect, maybe equally we respect Prophet Moses. We respect Prophet Abraham, 
We respect everybody who's worthy of respect. How can this be a cult? We are only obedient to love, not a personality. The center of our affection, veneration, is not a personality, is a theory, is a concept, is an ideology. And that ideology is love. Now, this is our good fortune that love is on two legs. The love that we circumambulate around walks on earth, talks, sits, and sleeps, eats. Embodiment of love. Aura TV. Guidance. Brought to you.